Hey guys, it's Faith, and I'm back with another video, and this time it's going to be a devotional. The book that I'm reading the devotional out of is called Hashtag Truth by Josh McDowell, and you can find it on Amazon if you're interested. Today I'm going to be reading June 19th's devotional. The title of the devotional is The Change, and here there are, this is the verse for it, so here we go. He died for everyone, so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and was raised for them. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5, 15 and 17. Many caterpillars are not beautiful creatures. They are creepy, crawly, gluttonous eaters. They will increase their weight 10,000 fold in less than a month. But at a certain point, something deep inside them signals it's time to change. It's time to cocoon. During that time, a radical change called metamorphosis takes place. And what emerges from the cocoon is a beautiful butterfly that spreads its wings to share its beauty with all of nature. The truth is, every child of God undergoes a supernatural metamorphosis of the soul. Children of God are given new nature, a new nature that desires to please Him. All of this newness of life is from God, who brought us back to Himself through what Christ did. 2 Corinthians 5.18 The evidence that your friends have become true Christ followers is that they will exhibit a new nature that is thirsty for godly things. One of the writers of Psalms put it this way, As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you. I, oh God, I thirst for God, the living God. Psalms 42, 1 and 2. Okay, so here are my notes on the subject. Don't be afraid of changing for God. Trust in Him and know that His ways are so much better than our own. So what I'm saying when I wrote this is that there's literally no reason to be afraid of God. He created this whole entire world. He created you. He knows what He's doing. Just trust him. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? So if you have the Lord in your life and he's living inside of you, there's literally no reason for you to be afraid. So if you do and you still have him, and yes, there are times when I'm afraid, but you need to put your faith in God and you need to trust him even when you are afraid, because fear is not of God. The devil is the one who puts fear in us. The devil is the one that allows that to happen. So you get in his name and pray to God to give you courage. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So God gives us a spirit of power, love, and self-control. God, it says right here, God does not give us fear. God doesn't give us fear. So if you feel fear about what God is telling you, that's not from him. You need to rebuke the fear. Rebuke the devil. Go to God. Listen to what he's telling you. Do what he's saying. Because trust me, trust him. What he's telling you to do is the right thing to do. And you never know what impact you might make by doing what he tells you to do. Ephesians 6.11 Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. So it talks about in Ephesians that God gives us a spiritual armor for any situation. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. But basically it just says that God gives us truth, peace, Readiness, righteousness, faith, um, salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. It's a lot of stuff. The point is, God literally has designed you to be prepared for the devil and for what he's going to say to you. So you need to prepare your mind. Die to yourself. Don't listen to your flesh. To listen to God. Use that armor he gave you to defend against the devil. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by play, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is saying, don't be anxious. Don't, don't be afraid. Do everything with, in, with prayer and supplication. Before you do something, just pray about it. Listen to what God is saying to you and do what he wants you to do. Be thankful whenever you pray to God. Make it known to him that you're praying to him, praying his name. Once you do this, his peace will come over you and it will be so overwhelming you won't be able to describe it. It'll just be peace. For example, my dad gets angry pretty easily and he has been praying for peace and I'm telling you, um, he has a shop in the town that we live near. He owns like a mechanic tuning vehicle kind of shop thing and um, even the most stressful situations will happen and he will just be at peace and you can't, ex like it's just hard to understand that. You can't really understand it because it's God. God is giving him that peace. Ephesians 4, 27, and give no opportunity to, opportunity to the devil. So when the devil tries to make you feel fearful about what God's telling you and what God's asking you to do, you need to rebuke the devil. Don't give, an, give, don't give him an opportunity to make you feel those things. God does not like the devil. He hates the devil. And the verse, the Bible tells us, don't give the opportunity to the devil. Stay close to God. Read his word and, and stay in that armor that God has given us. Because if you do that, it will be very, very hard for the devil to get to you. It'll be hard for the devil to make you do what he wants. Once you really connect with God, it'll be hard for him. He will definitely try. You know, he will definitely tempt you. But if you stay close to God, all will be well in the end. Before we accept Christ in our lives, many of us didn't live a beautiful life. We keep sinning and sinning, getting drunk, doing drugs, watching pornography, and other wicked things to try to fill the void we have in our hearts. So just as the caterpillar eats and eats and eats before having that urge to change, to cocoon into a butterfly, the eating represents the sinning. After sinning for a while, people will realize, like, after getting drunk and never really being filled up that void that they had never filling up that void that they have in their hearts they'll realize they are definitely missing something in life and that will be whenever god comes in if they believe in him and if they live their life for him the void we have in our hearts is existent because god designed us that way and you're probably wondering well why in the world would god des god design us with a void in our hearts well let me tell you we are meant to be in love with him just as he is with us. God put that void in our hearts so that we would have a longing for him. So that, so that we would want a relationship with him. That's why. He wants a relationship with you. He does. When you fill this void with Jesus and only him, you will no longer desire to sin for pleasure and to fill that void with wicked things. So once you accept God, once you fully commit to him, you won't have the desire to sin anymore. It'll just be not part of you. Now, it won't be like you can't sin. You just won't desire it. You will definitely sin, even if you have God in your life. You'll definitely sin. It's inevitable. But you'll desire to not sin. It'll make you feel worse once you do sin. Rather than if you didn't have God. You know, you wouldn't even know what you were doing. John 4.14 but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. This was Jesus talking. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to external life. I mean, eternal life. When we accept Jesus, who is the living water, to come over us and wash away our sins with his blood, we will not thirst anymore. So that's just what I said. Once you have God, you won't have a desire to sin anymore. That's what that's saying. You won't thirst for earthly things because you'll have that void filled. Once we accept Christ, Christ, we will have a desire to tell everyone about him. 
we will be on fire for God. Now, not literally flames, you know, but within us we'll feel the, the desire to tell everyone about him. We'll have the desire to be close to him and to just let him lead us. That's what I mean when I said that. With Jesus living inside of us and having accepted his death at the cross, along with repenting your sins to him, you will have eternal life with God in heaven. So once you accept that and you start living for him and start developing your relationship with him, once your heart is right with God, you'll have eternal life. Once we allow our hearts to be softened and for the spiritual metamorphosis to take place within us, we will forever be changed. Now what I mean by heart to be softened, that doesn't mean your literal heart will get soft and mushy or something. No. What I mean by that is that spiritually you will be able to understand what God's telling you. You'll be willing to do what he wants. That's what, you know, that, that's what that means. Lastly, trust God and his process. Don't be afraid to do things his way. Trust in him and do not give up. The end result will be magnificent. So guys, I'm encouraging you today to keep your trust in God and to just keep your focus on him. Because if you focus on yourself and you try to do things for yourself and not for him, it won't be good. So, if you have any prayers, you can always DM me on Instagram. I'll put my Instagram in the description. Or if you have any questions, feel free to DM me on there because I don't think there's YouTube messaging. Well, you can comment questions if you have them. But anyway, if you ever need me, I'm here. But most of all, God is there. God is here. And he is always willing to hear your prayers. And he wants to hear from you. So today I encourage you, pray to him. Get close to him. And don't go back to your old ways of sin. Thank you for watching, guys. I love you. Have a good day.